In this video, let's look at model fit for the measurement model. In our ISJ paper, in Table 3, we talk about the different recommended fit indices based on certain scenarios, rather than just always relying on the RMSEA, the CFI, the SRMR, or whatever your favorite measures are. When you have a large sample size, typically those three are actually pretty good. If you have a small sample size, though, it may be best to look at the CFI and the TLI, plus the adjusted RMSEA. Now, if you have a really complex model, lots of variables, you may want to take a look at the AIC, the BIC, or the SRMR. And if you have non-normal data, then looking at robust CFI, robust RMSEA, and SRMR may be best. Now, in the software I'll be using, SmartPLS, we do not yet have robust metrics for model fit, but we do have many of these. So, let me show you. Over in Smart PLS, in a model like this, a nice CFA, a nice measurement model, go to Calculate and just do the regular algorithm, and the regular defaults, and over here in Model Fit, we can see a whole host of Model Fit metrics. We talked about how in general, with large sample sizes, we can look at the RMSEA, which in this case, we want less than 0.1, looks good. The SRMR, we want less than 0.08, looks good. And the CFI, we want above 0.9, looks good. There are those other measures here, the TLI, the NFI, the BIC, the AIC, and many others, the GFI, and even the lower and upper confidence intervals for the RMSEA. If you want to be strict, then the high 90% confidence interval for the RMSEA should also be less than 0.1. And we do achieve that here. And that is how you assess model fit for the measurement model in Smart PLS CBSEM. In the next video, we are going to look at measurement invariance for when you're doing multi-group analysis.